Lesson 2 God's Mission to Us, Part 2 Sabbath Afternoon, October 7 We are to believe that we are chosen of God to be saved by the exercise of faith through the grace of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit and we are to praise and glorify God for such a marvelous manifestation of His unmerited favor. It is the love of God that draws the soul to Christ to be graciously received and presented to the Father. Through the work of the Spirit, the divine relationship between God and the sinner is renewed. The Father says, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. I will exercise forgiving love toward them and bestow upon them my joy. They shall be to me a peculiar treasure, for this people whom I have formed for myself shall show forth my praise. The Father sets His love upon His elect people who live in the midst of men. These are the people whom Christ has redeemed by the price of His own blood, and because they respond to the drawing of Christ through the sovereign mercy of God, they are elected to be saved as His obedient children. Our High Calling, page 77 Church members do not show that living connection with God that they must have in order to win souls from darkness to light. Make the tree good, and good fruit will be the result. The work of the Spirit of God upon the heart is essential to godliness. It must be received into the hearts of those who accept the truth and create in them clean hearts before one of them can keep his commandments and be doers of the word. Marvel not, said the great teacher unto the astonished Nicodemus, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The Bible is not studied as much as it should be. It is not made the rule of life. Were its precepts conscientiously followed and made the basis of character, there would be steadfastness of purpose that no business speculations or worldly pursuits could seriously influence. A character thus formed and supported by the Word of God will abide the day of trial of difficulties and dangers. The conscience must be enlightened, and the life sanctified by the love of the truth received into the heart before the influence will be saving upon the world. Review and Herald, August 28, 1879-76 Upon us, God pours unnumbered blessings. We are to express our thankfulness to Him that we are accepted as workers to cooperate with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who preach the word of the Lord must live that which they teach. If we receive the grace of God in the heart, we must reveal to others this grace in every word and act. Those who dwell upon the long sufferance and mercy of Christ must practice His patience and forbearance and never reveal a spirit of high-handed injustice toward their brethren or others. Medical Ministry, page 255 Sunday, October 8 The Triune God the Origin of Mission God stands toward His people in the relation of a father, and He has a father's claim to our faithful service. Consider the life of Christ. Standing at the head of humanity, serving His Father, He is an example of what every son should and may be. The obedience that Christ rendered, God requires from human beings today. He served His Father with love, in willingness and freedom. I delight to do thy will, O my God, he declared. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40, verse 8. Christ counted no sacrifice too great, no toil too hard, in order to accomplish the work which he came to do. At the age of twelve, he said, Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Luke chapter 2, verse 49. He had heard the call and had taken up the work. My meat, he said, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. 
John chapter 4, verse 34. Thus we are to serve God. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 282 and 283. The incarnation of Christ is a mystery. The union of divinity with humanity is a mystery indeed, hidden with God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages. It was kept in eternal silence by Jehovah and was first revealed in Eden by the prophecy that the seed of the woman should bruise the serpent's head and that he should bruise his heel. To present to the world this mystery that God kept in silence for eternal ages before the world was created, before man was created, was the part that Christ was to act in the work he entered upon when he came to this earth. And this wonderful mystery, the incarnation of Christ and the atonement that he made, must be declared to every son and daughter of Adam. His sufferings perfectly fulfilled the claims of the law of God. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1082. The Godhead was stirred with pity for the human race, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit gave themselves to the working out of the plan of redemption. In order fully to carry out this plan, it was decided that Christ, the only begotten Son of God, should give himself an offering for sin. What line can measure the depth of this love? God would make it impossible for man to say that he could have done more. With Christ, he gave all the resources of heaven that nothing might be wanting in the plan for man's uplifting. Here is love, the contemplation of which should fill the soul with inexpressible gratitude. Oh, what love! What matchless love! The contemplation of this love will cleanse the soul from all selfishness. It will lead the disciple to deny self, take up the cross, and follow the Redeemer. Councils on Health, page 222. Monday, October 9. Making Disciples, the Focus of Mission. Christ gave his disciples their commission. He made full provision for the prosecution of the work and took upon himself the responsibility for its success. So long as they obeyed his word and worked in connection with him, they could not fail. Go to all nations, he bade them. Go to the farthest part of the habitable globe. Labor in faith, for the time will never come when I will forsake you. The Savior's commission to the disciples included all the believers. It includes all believers in Christ to the end of time. It is a fatal mistake to suppose that the work of saving souls depends alone on the ordained minister. All to whom the heavenly inspiration has come are put in trust with the gospel. All who receive the life of Christ are ordained to work for the salvation of their fellow men. For this work the church was established, and all who take upon themselves its sacred vows are thereby pledged to be co-workers with Christ. The Faith I Live By, page 149 A great and solemn work is before the people of God. They are to come close to Christ in self-denial and self-sacrifice, their one aim being to give the message of mercy to all the world. Some will work in one way and some in another, as the Lord shall call and lead them. But they are all to strive together, seeking to make the work a perfect whole. With pen and voice, God's servants are to labor for him. The printed word of truth is to be translated into different tongues. To all peoples, the gospel is to be preached. This Day with God, page 221. No sooner does one come to Christ than there is born in his heart a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and sanctifying truth cannot be shut up in his heart. If we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ and are filled with the joy of his indwelling spirit, we shall not be able to hold our peace. If we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, we shall have something to tell. 
there will be an intensity of desire to follow in the path that Jesus trod. There will be an earnest longing that those around us may behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29 And the effort to bless others will react in blessings upon ourselves. This was the purpose of God in giving us a part to act in the plan of redemption. He has granted men the privilege of becoming partakers of the divine nature and, in their turn, of diffusing blessings to their fellow men. This is the highest honor, the greatest joy that it is possible for God to bestow upon men. Those who thus become participants in labors of love are brought nearest to their Creator. Steps to Christ, pages 78 and 79. Tuesday, October 10. The Eternal Gospel. The Message of Mission. It is the gospel and the gospel alone that will sanctify the soul, and this makes possible to the receiver that life that measures with the life of God. This is the record that God has given us, even eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who is a partaker of the divine nature will escape the corruptions that are in the world through lust. His faith in Christ as the life-giver gives him life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. This life of sanctification and joy in believing is for every soul who in faith will claim the promises of the Word of God and draw upon divine strength for the work of overcoming. Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, page 356 He that winneth souls is wise, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. What is done through the cooperation of men with God is a work that shall never perish, but endure through the eternal ages. He that makes God his wisdom, that grows up into the full stature of a man in Christ Jesus, will stand before kings, before the so-called great men of the world, and show forth the praises of him who hath called him out of darkness into his marvelous light. Christian Education, page 97. We are to be diligent workers. An idle man is a miserable creature. But what excuse can be offered for idleness in the great work which Christ gave his life to accomplish? The spiritual faculties cease to exist if they are not exercised, and it is Satan's design that they shall perish. All heaven is actively engaged in the work of preparing a people for the second coming of Christ to our world, and we are laborers together with God. The end of all things is at hand. Now is our opportunity to work. The night cometh, in which no man can work. We should proclaim Christ and Him crucified, thus preparing the way for His second appearing. Unite with the great Master Worker. Follow the self-denying Redeemer through His pilgrimage of love on earth. The same Jesus that walked with His disciples, that taught them upon earth, that toiled and suffered in his human nature, is with us in his divine power. He is at our right hand to help in every emergency. Let us lift up Jesus and reveal the Bible foundation for our faith. Review and Herald, January 24, 1893 Wednesday October 11. God's People, the Channels of Mission God had chosen Israel. He had called them to preserve among men the knowledge of His law and of the symbols and prophecies that pointed to the Savior. He desired them to be as wells of salvation to the world. 
what Abraham was in the land of his sojourn, what Joseph was in Egypt, and Daniel in the courts of Babylon, the Hebrew people were to be among the nations. They were to reveal God to men. In the call of Abraham, the Lord had said, I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. The same teaching was repeated through the prophets. The Desire of Ages, page 27. Ye are the light of the world, Christ declares. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. God's work in the earth in these last days is to reflect the light that Christ brought into the world. This light is to dissipate the gross darkness of ages. Men and women in heathen darkness are to be reached by those who at one time were in a similar condition of ignorance, but who have received the knowledge of the truth of God's word. These heathen nations will accept eagerly the instruction given them in a knowledge of God. Very precious to God is his work in the earth. Christ and heavenly angels are watching it every moment. As we draw near to the coming of Christ, more and still more of missionary work will engage our efforts. The message of the renewing power of God's grace will be carried to every country and clime until the truth shall belt the world. But before this work can be accomplished, we must experience here in our own country the work of the Holy Spirit upon our hearts. Councils to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 531 and 532. If the Church of Christ were fulfilling the purpose of our Lord, light would be shed upon all that sit in darkness and in the region and shadow of death. Instead of congregating together and shedding responsibility and cross-bearing, the members of the church would scatter into all lands, letting the light of Christ shine out from them, working as he did for the salvation of souls, and this gospel of the kingdom would speedily be carried to all the world. The cross of Calvary is to be lifted high above the people, absorbing their minds and concentrating their thoughts. Then all the spiritual faculties will be charged with divine power direct from God. Then there will be a concentration of the energies in genuine work for the Master. The workers will send forth to the world beams of light as living agencies to enlighten the earth. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, pages 42 and 44. Thursday, October 12. The World, the Arena of Mission. Christ's visible presence was about to be withdrawn from the disciples, but a new endowment of power was to be theirs. The Holy Spirit was to be given them in its fullness, sealing them for their work. Behold, the Savior said, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verses 5 and 8. The Savior knew that no argument, however logical, would melt hard hearts or break through the crust of worldliness and selfishness. He knew that his disciples must receive the heavenly endowment, that the gospel would be effective only as it was proclaimed by hearts made warm and lips made eloquent by a living knowledge of him who is the way, the truth, and the life. The work committed to the disciples would require great efficiency, for the tide of evil ran deep and strong against them. A vigilant, determined leader was in command of the forces of darkness, and the followers of Christ could battle for the right only through the help that God, by His Spirit, would give them. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 30 and 31. The disciples were not to wait for the people to come to them. 
They were to go to the people, hunting for sinners as a shepherd hunts for lost sheep. Christ opened the world before them as their field of labor. They were to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It was of the Savior that they were to preach, of his life of unselfish service, his death of shame, his unparalleled, unchanging love. His name was to be their watchword, their band of union. In his name they were to subdue the strongholds of sin. Faith in his name was to mark them as Christians. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 14. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. John chapter 17, verse 21. Let these words be oft repeated, and let every soul train his ideas and spirit and action daily that he may fulfill this prayer of Jesus Christ. He does not request impossible things of his Father. He prays for the very things which must be in his disciples in relation to their oneness to each other and their unity and oneness with God and Jesus Christ. Anything short of this is not attaining to perfection of Christian character. The golden chain of love binding the hearts of the believers in unity, in bonds of fellowship and love, and in oneness with Christ and the Father, makes the connection perfect and bears to the world a testimony of the power of Christianity that cannot be controverted. That I May Know Him, page 173. For further reading, Our High Calling, Fullness of Christ's Ransom, page 78, and The Acts of the Apostles, written from Rome, pages 478 and 479.